Hello everybody, this is Andy, and welcome to episode 17, is this 17? I think it's 17, of Omnifactory. Today, we got some stuff to do, and let's review what we were going to do before the end of last episode. We were going to create, whoa, look at that, that's a, that's a big boy right there. We were going to make a bunch of diesel engines because this thing will produce a lot of power for us. Now I have to use a ton of these stable titanium casings to fill this in, and I think I made way too many. However, let me fill it in and I'll be back. The diesel engine multi-block needs these guys in the center. So we need two of them per, and they just go just like this. These are just behind the controllers, which are right there. And that is it. I have one extra because they're made three at a time. So let's think about energy outputs. These go just behind this. I think they have to go here, though I'm not entirely sure. Now for each of these, I'm going to use three fluid input hatches because the fluids I need to use for this are uh, the biodiesel that we, or the, um, what is it, nitro diesel that we've been making out of our biodiesel. Uh, they need oxygen and they also need lubricant to run properly. The oxygen is completely optional, not required. However, it triples the power output, so why wouldn't you add it? Anyways, let me deal with this really quickly and I'll be back. So, I have just actually learned something pretty interesting about these diesel engines. Apparently, just like you can't put anything on the front face, you can't put anything on the back face. These are the only two that you can interact with with fluids and stuff like that. So, if I put a fluid input hatch here, it doesn't form. But if I put a stable casing right there, it does form. So, what I'm going to have to do is put casings around all of these, and they'll slowly form. And I'll need to put a fluid input hatch on the bottom to pump in whatever extra fluid I don't want to be able to access. And because the diesel engines are a wonderful purple color, let's do all of their fluids on purple as well. I should never in my right, right mind be doing this because I'm definitely going to mess it up. However, let's go ahead and shove fluids into these. First things first, let's do nitro diesel, and I'm going to use a pump to export into a tank. It'll shove 40 buckets in per second, which should be quite good. Secondly, I'm using a distillery, pumping in creosote oil using a fluid interface, and ender tanking the uh, lubricant that comes out. It's pretty quick. I think we should be fine using this setup. And finally, let's destroy all of that overhead power that we have right now, and set up eight of these molecular disintegrators to turn water into oxygen and nitrogen. Wait, hold on. Water into oxygen and hydrogen. The in-world water accumulation system thing that we've been using from uh, the beginning of the pack till now just really isn't cutting it anymore. And we have access to the aqueous accumulator, which is disgusting in this pack. It doesn't even need water around it to accumulate just basically an infinite amount of water. And these things are filling up, and we are starting to fill up with a ton of oxygen. So I can throw my last ender tank on here, grab the pump that I crafted up for it, and toss it right there. And we should have an oxygen storage now. I am going to throw this on my ME system eventually. However, if I need this just for my diesel stuff, I'm going to make sure I don't mess it up. And now we should have here all three of the fluids we need. Let's throw the lubricant on the bottom. I don't think I'm going to need to access this very much because it crafts up really quickly and I'm pretty sure it's used pretty slowly. But I'm going to leave the tank visible from the top so we can see if there's any problems going on right away. And up here on the top, I'm using two ender fluid conduit lines that are disconnected from each other but still using different channels just in case. And all of these guys should be filling up by now. Let's check on the lubricant. Is it, ooh, it looks like we didn't have enough to fill up the thing all the way. Let's go check the production. It's going as fast as it can, but it's also getting used up as fast as it can. I'll add a second distil distillery if I need to. However, I still think we haven't reached steady state on the, um, the uh, diesel engines. Let's check below, actually, this last one. Oh, it's almost got 12 buckets already. I'm going to let these fill up, and then we can maybe think about turning these things on. Wait. Oh, they're running. Oh, shoot, they are running. For some reason, my tiny little baby brain didn't think they'd start up when I ha when they had everything to start up, but I guess that's not how it works. When you uh, put everything that needs to burn into a machine, it, it tends to burn. So let's hook up five of these together. Is that five? Wait, is that five? One, two, three, four, one more. 
five and the other five will be connected to a different CE, CEU. Yeah, they're CEU. CEU converts, converts, converts Greg Tech Energy into RF. All right, the uh, CEUs are up here and they're beginning to store energy. I think that's, is that six billion RF or 64 billion RF? Hold on, one, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, that's 640 million. 640 million EU times four, that's two and a half billion RF. So each of these CEUs right here stores 2.4 billion with a B RF. And they're filling up so fast. And now I have a truly monumental task. I have to hook up Signalum energy conduits to the entire base. I made about 800 of them because I think that's about how many conduits we have right now. And um, a lot of them are very hidden. So I'm going to have to start at the beginning up here where my original energy sources start and follow them throughout the entire base. All in the nooks and crannies all around make sure i don't miss any make sure i don't break any uh, glass cables because that's a that causes problems um and it's gonna be nasty also um i should probably i should probably take one of these guys as uh, my own personal battery all right so now i have successfully clicked on every single conduit in my base and they're all signalum and these guys are actually producing very slowly because I don't really need the power. But as you can see, it ticks up and down just a little bit in here. So we're definitely producing and using a little bit of this power from this guy. Also, um, I made a couple of upgrades. Since we have Signalum now, I can make Signalum upgrades for these things. And um, it kind of doubles the RF output. 25,000 up from 12,000 RF per tick and I put these fuel catalyzers in here instead of the auxiliary transmission coils because I want them to use less diamonds because I'm actually I'm uh, I'm hurting for diamonds a little bit it's going down I'm gonna need to add more simulation chambers I think especially if this thing can now produce um, once I upgrade these guys it'll now produce 600,000 RF per tick in fact this system right here makes me think that Maybe the diesel engine thing that I did was a complete waste of time because this produces just around 250, 260,000 RF per tick. But I guess, I mean, we're, we're inching up towards a million RF per tick and we're using a fair chunk of it. So, hey, we can use whatever we get. So we're inching towards the end of the mid game and we're about to move into the late game. I can actually start completing quests here if I want to. However, I'm not entirely sure that's what I want to do quite yet. Let's take a look at some more of these mid-game quests. Let's, in fact, make some Vanadium Galleon, because we'll need these for LUV, uh, sir, or LUV, LUV casings. Yeah, so we're going to need to make Vanadium first, and then Vanadium Galleon. And I think Galleon is just a smelter recipe. Yep, and Vanadium we get from Vanadium Magnetite. Yep, that stuff that we get at the beginning of the game with Iron Ore... That's like end game stuff. It's also really, really cheap. Apparently, I don't have any Omni pennies. I think they're all in Omni nickels. Yep, I have 184 Omni nickels. That's uh, that's a couple bucks right there. Let me go ahead and turn some of these into Omni pennies, and I'll buy a bit of this vanadium magnetite. Oh, I forgot to put it in my system. And I'll buy some of this vanadium magnetite. Yeah, that should be enough. And we can go shove this through our ore processing system and get a ton of, seriously, and we can get a ton of vanadium. And since we really don't need to use those vanadium magnetite dusts that we have in here to smelt into like, what, three pieces of iron? We have free iron forever. Let's electrolyze it into magnetite dust and vanadium dust, both of which we can use. This can, I guess, be turned into iron. That probably won't actually be used, but the vanadium is what we want. Oh, wow. Um. I didn't quite expect it to be that fast. I kind of expected a slow one like the Shelite and the Tungstate. But hey, I'll, I'll take it. I'd say we have a nice uh, fade into this beautiful blue right here. I mean, I, I am an artist, so you know. Oh what, you guys didn't know I'm an artist? Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm an exercise science guy. But I am pretty good at building glass furnaces, might I say. I have quite a few. And we should have some, if I can spell it right, some vanadium. So let's see how this furnace is doing. Uh, I, I had it, 
they were originally running a double EV, however that was way too fast and I don't need that much vanadium that fast. So um, it's running at EV now. This one however takes 500 seconds to do one process, so it's running at double EV. And there we go, the second blast furnace is set up. So vanadium gallium is being produced. Do I have this as a... Uh... No, it's not a quest. I think I already picked one up anyways. And there's our first vanadium gallium. Let's go over to our... Whoa. Let's go over to our vacuum freezer and shove a little, bu a little bit of it in here. And with the level emitters on, the blast furnaces are complete. There's actually a reason for me to keep this vanadium... Uh, dust around because it's used in vanadium steel dust which is something that we might need it's something that we do need in a decent quantity it's also used in hssg which is something that we definitely need because it well it's also used in here but i think we also need it for something i'm not entirely sure is this used for things Ooh, it is used for things okay this might be uh, luv stuff however putting that aside let's make eight more signalum kits to finish off our lot uh, that should, in theory, well not in theory, in, in, I know, I really can't get upstairs, can I? It should finish off these and bring our total RF output to around 850,000 RF per tick. That's a, that's a, quite a little bit. And just like that, all my stuff is crafted up, and if I can only get back here somehow, I can apply these augments. And, as you see, uh, it was 12,500, now it's 25,000. That is an insane upgrade. Um, it makes me also wonder what happens if I put the auxiliary augments. So let me, wait, that's the, uh, this one. Can I get two of those? Now we're at 25,000 RF per tick max. What happens if I do this? 30,000. Okay, that's not enough of an upgrade for what I would like it to be. I'd rather have the uh, fuel catalyzers in there because they'll use less diamonds which is something I need to do because I'm tired of making more simulation chambers. Now let's go ahead and knock off a couple of quests that I feel like can happen so let's let's make them happen. Let's fill in this page just a little bit more than it already is. I think I'm gonna have to put in a couple more recipes most specifically that vanadium gallium wire recipe however we should be able to make both of these holes now. Okay, so let's craft up one LUV machine hole and also one UV, or not not UV, what is it, um, IV? IV machine hole. Sorry, I have a, um, wait, what? Oh, I still have the recipe in my inventory. Oopsies. Uh, let's go put that there and say, give me one of these. And it should be pretty fast, like, none of these, none of these steps should take very long except for maybe the compressor because it's a higher tier metal. But there's one, and let's also grab the LUV. There we go, and that should be both those quests done. Yep, there they are. And this page is looking pretty filled in, so I don't know how much I want to do left in here. I'm gonna avoid this for the longest time possible because I don't really wanna do nuclear craft, if at all possible. I don't know if it's avoidable, but I I don't like nuclear craft very much, and I especially don't like the uh, fission reactor, so we're going to avoid that. I guess the next step is like the slice and splice, since that's actually pretty easy to make, and then probably a soul binder, which is slightly harder to make, but still doable, and I mean, I guess I can make the experience obli ob ooh, obelisk, because it's really easy, like, it's a quest, I'll, I'll do it. All right, the slice and splice and the experience obelisk are completely done. That's two quests out of the way. However, I need Vorpal because the soul binder requires four heads, only two of which I have. The Enderman farm is making Enderman heads and zombie heads come from this right here. I guess I could get skeleton skulls pretty easily, but uh, I just made Vorpal, so let's use it. And Vorpal is going to go on our axe because our axe is like, kind of technically our main weapon. It has sharpness 5, I think. No, sharpness 4. That's pretty good. Oh, hello. Please give me your head. And please don't kill me. That would be very unfortunate. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait a second. I need to not die. Ha! Tricked you. Ha! Tr oh, I didn't trick you. But you're stupid. Oh god, I'm low health. Hey, there's a skull. Oh god, I'm trapped down here with a couple of creepers and a spider. Spider needs to go first. Okay. Good job, good job. 
And please stay away from me. I don't need you exploding. I need you vorpling. No! Oh, hey, he gave me a skull. Please die. Thank you. And now I can go home. Completely honest with you guys, uh, that was a lot less painful of an experience than I thought it would be. Vorpal is actually pretty good at doing what it does. And now we have a soul binder. I don't need it right now, but the quest is done. Actually, I lied completely. We're going to put the soul vial to use right away. And that thing doesn't have energy because it doesn't have a capacitor. Let me make a octatic capacitor really quickly. And this should take like a half a second. Yeah, literally took half a second. Okay, in there you go. And you're getting energy. And I need to do this. I'm going to supply it with my own levels for now because I'm too lazy to automate this. I forgot to say what I'm doing. What I'm doing is I'm getting these prescient crystals because I want to make an angel ring. The angel ring requires two of these vibrant jetpacks, which requires four of these thrusters, which will each require a prescient crystal. So there we go. And this is crafting up a energetic jetpack. I'm doing the last step, this vibrant jetpack alone or uh, by hand, because I already have an energetic jetpack, but I don't think it'll it'll recognize it if I throw it in the system. So I'm going to craft up everything I need by hand and make sure I do it right. All right, and this should be, oh. Oh, that's, that's not very cool. Um, looks like I am being, you have forced my hand, pack, you forced my hand. I'm going to throw these two jetpacks into the trash, and I'll give myself a couple of the energe energetic energetic bat jetpacks, right? This is it. Uh, oh no, it automatically starts charging. Uh, bad flux capacitor. No, don't do that. Um, and now, can I do this? And, ah yes, okay, it works now, and we're good. Okay, now here's the thing. I might have to cheat again because I'm going to charge this jetpack. I just want to see if it has a perfect hover. If it has a perfect hover, I'm not making the engine or the um, angel ring. If it doesn't have a perfect hover, definitely making the angel ring. <sighs> That's not a perfect hover. Looks like I'm making the angel ring. Oh, it's not a perfect hover, but it's so fast. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, I kind of want to have this. This is so. Let's get out in the open air. Let's see. Oh man, that feels crazy, dude. It's so fast. You know what, Jetpack? You have me convinced. Let's do the realistic thing. Let's uh, let's have a Jetpack. Jetpacks, the things that we have in real life. Yes, definitely. Um, well, slightly more realistic than, you know, creative flight. I just really like how fast it makes us move and I'll make the angel ring eventually, but for now, this hover, that's good enough. However, since I do want something better than this eventually, we are going to have to make an angel ring and create the flux infused jet plate. I'm going to put that on my to-do list so we remember to do it. We're pretty close. I think I could actually make it right now. However, it'd be a lot of work and I'm not really about work right now. Before I end the episode, because I'm going to have to soon, because I'm actually going on vacation and need to record a Greg Tech New Horizons video, let's look at making the Assembler IV, which I can actually do right now because I put in all the recipes in between episodes, and making these better circuits. I want to make the fourth and final tier 4 circuits at least, and maybe look at some better tier 5, 6, and maybe creating 7. So I should essentially be able to do this. I'm going to have to substitute in my crappy circuits for now. Um, that would be these. Wait. Six. Yep, six. These guys. And I should be able to, if I throw this in my assembling machines, an IV assembler. No, apparently not. What am I missing? Platinum cables. I've never added that recipe before. And now, with that recipe added, we're good to go. And it shouldn't take all that long. It might take a minute or two, but it should go ahead and get created. While that's crafting up, let's go ahead and set up an electrolyzer to make radium salt, which I have a bunch of actually, into radon. Radon is used to make, well, first of all, it's used in this, which we're going to need some of later. And it's also used to make these qubit CPU wafers. These are going to be, if we craft them into this, necessary to make the fourth and final tier four circuits, better tier five circuits, better tier six circuits, and that looks like it's just about it. 
Fairly simple, same as all our other fluids. We're gonna do this. I'm going to give it radon salt through the ME system. I'm gonna use a conveyor through HV, and we're going to import items just like that into here. And it looks like it's really slow. Does this have to be run at, oh, it does have to be run at EV. So this is the lowest tier that it can be run at. I might have to upgrade, or, uh, upgrade this soon, but for now, this should give us everything we need. So I'm going to output to the left side, put that there, and I'll fluid storage bus this and get rid of the rock salt. And there we go, slowly but surely, we're creating radon, and we should get a decent buffer of this stuff. Also, I just have a little trash can down here, and I just lost my stone. However, no big deal, we have super fast fly now. And I have to go back because I remembered we need a bucket of this stuff to complete the quest. Also, I thought I partitioned you. Now you're partitioned. Good job. Okay, next step is to make radon eyes. I'm gonna do this using, or putting a chemical bath right next to that guy. I made a pump, yep, HV pump. It needs to import the radon and that empties. However, we're making more, it's fine. Um, I just need to put an ME interface and this can be a small ME interface for this one. And just need to glass cable it and put the recipe in there. That's that. And it just uses an eye of ender to make the quantum eye. And there we go, you're on. So I should be able to go over here. I will actually, I don't even have to go over here. I just, it's just habit to come back here every time I need to craft something because I'm so used to not having this crafting terminal. It's so nice to have, but you know, looks like it's crafting. Let's go back over here and check on it. Okay. Um, I did forget to export it, so I'm glad I checked on it. And it needs one of these wrought iron screwdrivers. Wrench up, auto output. There we go. And that is a quantum eye right there. Quest complete. And this is used to make these qubit processing units, it looks like. Let's see how these are made. So two quantum eyes and a nano CPU wafer with a little bit of gallium arsenide, it looks like turns into a qubit CPU wafer, which can be cut just like that. Pretty good. Um, we're gonna need gallium arsenide. Gallium arsenide. We have a ton of gallium. In fact, it's been being used in our base since approximately day one. We don't have any arsenic, however, because that comes from electrolyzing cobaltite. So we put cobaltite in there. I need to filter this, and I'm gonna go ahead and set this up off camera, but I'll show you the result. And there we go. We are starting to electrolyze the cobaltite, which is actually pretty fast, into arsenic, cobalt, and sulfur, it looks like, which uh, two of those are useless. However, one of them is incredibly useful. Arsenic, just like that. And we're going to need a mixer, actually. Can I get a... I have an HV mixer. Um, can I just hook that up over here somewhere? Do I have space for one? I can probably do it right here. And there we go. This is our mixer making gallium arsenide. Um, I'm, I'm purposefully supplying it with a very little amount of both of them because I don't particularly want to use up all my gallium or all of my arsenic because it might come in handy later. In fact, it will come in handy with this, uh, but it looks like that's the only thing it'll come in handy for. So let's not use up all of it quite yet on this gallium arsenide. Okay, I'm not entirely sure what's going on, but for some reason, this thing won't extract gallium arsenide, even, like, I, I've checked the channels a hundred times. For some reason, it doesn't see this drawer as valid. So, I guess we're just going to have to, sometimes this flight is a little too much. I think we're just going to have to put the drawer right on next to it, and storage bus it, which is fine. And there we go, we have 64 gallium arsenide available on the system, and 64 backlogged in this machine. So let's get to smelting it up, I think. Is that what needs to happen? This needs to be, okay, yep, we need to blast furnace it, and then we need to fluid extract it. So let's set up another blast furnace. All right, I know it's a little cramped back here once again. However, this guy is producing gallium arsenide, and I can prove it to you right here. Perfect. And since we need this in liquid form, I am fluid extracting it at HV. It's actually pretty fast. We shouldn't have to worry about it. Right now, I'm just going to send all of this to the fluid extractor because might as well build up a backlog. However, in the future, we might want to keep a little bit of it as dust and ingot. 
Turns out you can buy cobaltite ore, and guess who's rich? Me. I am rich. I'm gonna buy a bunch of it and then be sad about how many Omni coins I just spent. Oh my goodness. This is gonna hold us over for a while though, so I'm not upset. It means I'm not gonna have to worry about cobalt at all, or well, cobaltite at all. In the meantime, our IV assembling machine should be done. And wow, let's see if I can grab it. Oh, <laughs> I actually got it. That's that quest complete. I have a feeling this is 100 Omni coins. Ooh, only 25. Okay, that is fine. Um, so I think we actually have everything to make this now. However, let's hold off until the next video. I think I'm actually pretty long on this video. And while, well, like I said, I need to record Greg Tech. So yeah, love you guys. Um, Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a like. Why not? It makes me happy. Have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.